Okay, so get the headset out of the way. Get myself to a position of the wrench controls. Got the doors latched. The cup holder out of the way. Okay, so whether you can see or not, but the fuel selector is coming on at the top at the start of the flow. They're both on. And then, like any Cessna, we'll come down to the bottom of the pedestal and we'll check that cabin heat firewall shut off is in up to the rudder trim set about a quarter of an inch to the right just to help us with the torque on takeoff up to the firewall fuel shut off is in we have slight right aileron trim which i'm assuming is because of the uh, fuel imbalance so we'll leave that where it is for the moment uh, across to our elevator trim which may or may, may or may not be able to see but we're going to set that on the aft ish end of the takeoff range um, just due to only me being on board and up the front. Uh, emergency power lever is stowed. Power lever is idle. Prop lever is in feather. Fuel condition lever is cut off. Flaps uh, selected and indicating in the same position so no one's tinkered with it. All of our cabin heat uh, forward. Bleed air is off. That's low. Fans are low. Air conditioner switch and fan switch is in off so we're not chewing any battery there separator uh, there is a little bit of standing water around so i'm going to pop that open so that if we take any of that water down the intake and just spit out the side all of our light switches are off our park brake is on all of our stall heats peter heats are off all of our lights are off with the exception of the beacon so people will know we're about to start up down to our circuit breakers, which are all in, other than the ones that are collared and meant to be popped. Then we'll run up the uh, inside line of our side panel here. So avionics switches are off, starter is off, fuel boost, it's off, but it can now come to normal. Nothing it'll happen because the battery master is off. And we'll now bring the battery master on. As we do, we'll see that we've got our fuel boost uh operating there we've got the the fuel pressure low light swapping with the ox fuel pump on light because the pump is armed and it's bringing up the pressure which we're not not requiring and then it's going off again so that's what alternates with the fuel low pressure uh, however now that we've checked that the arming mechanism works we do want continuous fuel flow for start so we'll bring that to on as we go past our uh our voltmeter switch here we're going to flick down the bolts and check that we've got a minimum of 24 volts for the start Got a nice new battery in there, so it's just over 25. Up to all of our lights, and we've got five to go live, and we have a correct five. Uh, if you've got an additional one, chances are it's going to be the door warning or the voltage low, in which case we won't start. Cross to torque zero, RPM zero. ITT, it's a cold start, so it's ambient, so it's well below our, uh, our scale there. NG is zero, oil pressure zero, and oil temp, much like the ITT, is ambient at the moment. The one we really care about, is our fuel flow which we can see there is on zero and if i just turn the battery master off for a moment you'll see it actually drops down to off so it's it's powered to zero so that's how important it is so that we know that the gauge is actually working our uh, fuel flow uh sorry fuel quantity there we've got almost even but just a little bit more in the left which is why we've got that slight uh slight aileron trim in okay so we're ready to start one hand near the uh, fuel condition lever the other hand on the start switch and we'll call out our parameters that we're having a look through as we start. So we are clear prop. We're going to engage the starter. We've got starter energized ignition on. Propeller is turning, so we know we haven't uh, left the tie on. Fuel flow is zero. Oil pressure is rising. NG's above 14% and stable. ITT's below 150. We can now go into low idle. And we're confirming at 25% NG not above 600 ITT and hand back on the FCL in case we need to cut it off and we're checking not above 850 at any point during the start. There we go, it was a nice cool start, about normal temperatures. Before after start, we'll continue from where my hand left off on the start switch and bring it back to off, which will take out generator off and ignition on. We'll then go forward to the fuel boost and bring it back to normal, which means the ox fuel pump won't be on because the engine driven pump is operating. Coming around to our standby power on, which will probably bring that one on just for the moment while the generator is uh, still struggling to recharge the battery after it just plugged the daylights out of it during the start. Avionics 1, Avionics 2, 
come across now to a prop weaver out of feather. Nothing much happens for a couple of seconds, but it takes a while to come out of feather. Flaps down to 20, ready for takeoff. And fans, we will just flip down to ventilate. Then we're just going to do our upside down seat and flow around to finish it out for your quantity gauges. So, separator is open. We left it open at the start. If we uh, hadn't, we would now open it. Across to our panel lights if we needed them, but we don't because it's daytime. Two, which you may not be able to see there, I'll try and shift, shift the control column. Our external lights, nabs on, three cogs. Check our generator came online. Check that our suction's up in the green. Up to all of our lights, and they all should be out with the exception of usually first start of the day, standby electric power will stay on for a, uh, for a couple of minutes after start as the generator um, generator struggles to charge our poor old battery. Torque, usually sitting about 150. Prop RPM, usually sitting about 1050. The ones we really care about though, uh, ITT below 685 and NG sitting above 52. If you can see sitting slightly below 52. So I'm just going to bump the FCL up towards high idle, it's about two thirds of the way up usually. And then you'll find as the NG spinning faster, the generator will be spinning faster, which means that will also help the, uh, the generator charge the battery. Uh, oil, TCPs are in the green, and fuel flow, somewhat believable, should be sitting around 110 or 120 if we're at idle, but we have bumped up the idle towards high, so that's why it's sitting that little bit higher, so we can live with that. And we have our fuel quantity, again, with a little bit more on the left, so for our taxi and pre takeoffs, we're going to leave the right fuel tap off and just out of the left, we'll catch that with our pre takeoff checks. From there on, we're just going to set up all our GPSs and then we'll taxi for our first line of the day checks.